The Mine Safety and Health Administration has a lot to say about training, fire, and fire extinguishers, but what you won't find in the 30 CFR are specific instructions on how to fight fire. choose a fire extinguisher, how to use that extinguisher, when not to use an extinguisher, as well as how to keep your extinguisher in a fire ready condition. Fire increases at a rapid rate, so when faced with a fire you have to make a split second decision. Am I going to stay and fight the fire or am I going to seek safety? One goal of this presentation is to give you the knowledge to make your decision based on sound judgment and not emotion. We on fire and fire extinguishers, but we all need to be aware of the most important part of any fire safety program, and that's prevention. You know, put your oily rags in covered metal containers. Turn your engines off before refueling. Clean up your spills. There's so many things that we can do at work and at home to prevent fires before they happen. And because MSHA says so, why do we need fire extinguisher training? What about your safety? Or your co-worker's safety? What about reducing property damage? And in reducing property damage, we're controlling downtime. For a long time, the thought was that fire consisted of three components. Heat, fuel, and an oxidizing agent, usually oxygen. These three components were represented by what's known as the fire triangle. As our knowledge of fire increased, we recognize that fire also involves a series of interconnecting chemical reactions, which are commonly referred to as a chemical chain reaction. So now the fire triangle has been changed to what's known as the fire tetrahedron. So now four components represent the combustion process. As long as we keep any one of the four removed, the fire will stay extinguished. But if at any point the four components come together, the fire will ignite. So to put it in a picture form, you can extinguish a fire by displacing the oxygen, cooling the heat, cutting the fuel, or by stopping the reaction. We've looked at how the four components come together to make fire. Now let's look at each individual component. The fuel can be any combustible material. It can be a solid, liquid, or a gas. Fire only needs about 16% oxygen to burn. You know, the Earth's atmosphere is around 21%. The heat increases the temperature of the fuel. It's like wood. You know, the wood is not what burns. It's the vapors from the wood that burn. And then finally, the chemical reaction is basically all of these coming together. And in the end result, you have the fire. There are five classifications of fire. Most of you are probably already aware of the first four. Class A is ordinary combustibles. Class B, flammable liquids. C is electrical. And D are the combustible metals. The fifth one is relatively new, and it's class K, which is kitchen grease. Ordinary combustibles such as wood, paper, and cloth make up the A class. Normally, if it produces an ash, it's considered class A. Class A fire extinguishers are symbolized by the letter A inside of a triangle. If the triangle is color-coded, it will be green. The universal picture symbol for a Class A fire extinguisher is a trash can and wood burning. So when you look at the label of the fire extinguisher, if you see the letter A inside the triangle or the trash can and wood burning, you'll know that that fire extinguisher is good for a Class A fire. Flammable liquids such as gasoline, kerosene, and paint make up the B class. Class B fire extinguishers are symbolized by the letter B inside of a square. If the square is color coded, it will be red. The universal picture symbol for a class B fire extinguisher is a gas can burning. 
So if you look at the label and you see a B inside of a square, or you see the gas can burning, you'll know that that fire extinguisher is good for a class B fire, which is flammable liquids. Electrical items such as appliances, switches, and panel boxes make up C class. Class C fire extinguishers are symbolized by the letter C inside of a circle. If the circle is color coded, it'll be blue. The universal picture symbol for a Class C fire extinguisher is an electrical outlet and a plug burning. So if you see the C inside of a circle or the plug and the outlet burning, you'll know that that fire extinguisher is good for a Class C fire. Metals such as magnesium and titanium make up the D class. Class D fire extinguishers are symbolized by the letter D inside a star. If the star is color-coded, it will be yellow. There's no universal picture symbol for the Class D fire extinguisher. The thing to remember about the D-Class is if you have not been trained specifically on combustible metals, always call for help. They are very dangerous. K involves kitchen fires or grease fires. Class K, unlike Class D, has a picture symbol but no letter. And the picture symbol for it is a frying pan on fire. Now that you know the different classifications of fire, we're going to talk about the fire extinguishers themselves. They come in many different types, shapes, and sizes. And in these next few slides, I'll cover the ones that are most commonly found in the mining industry. This extinguisher is a carbon dioxide extinguisher. Its distinguishing features are the big horn at the end of the hose, and it has no pressure gauge. CO2 extinguishers are normally rated for Class B and C fires. Some of them are extremely heavy. The carbon dioxide displaces the oxygen in the air, and that's what puts the fire out. It has a range of about 8 feet, but 8 feet is pushing it. The stored pressure dry chemical extinguisher has a small nozzle and a pressure gauge. It's usually rated for A, B, and C fires. They range anywhere from 2.5 to 30 pounds, and depending on their size, they can extinguish a fire up to about 20 feet away. When you depress the operating lever of a stored pressure extinguisher, the expellent gas pushes the dry chemical down. It then travels up the siphon tube, through the hose, and out the discharge nozzle. The dry chemical then puts the fire out. Notice that the cartridge type has its discharge lever located on the nozzle handle. It also has a separate puncture lever to open the expellent gas. I took the cover off so you can see exactly where the gas is stored until you release it into the extinguisher itself. It's usually rated for A, B, and C fires. And this type of extinguisher usually weighs between 5 and 30 pounds. And like the stored pressure unit, it also has a range of up to about 20 feet. Here you can see that when you press the puncture lever, it pushes a pin through the top of the expellent gas cylinder. That allows the gas to enter the gas tube. The gas then pushes the dry chemical out the outlet elbow through the hose to the operating lever. When you open the operating lever, it allows the dry chemical to escape the extinguisher, putting the fire out. The Mine Safety and Health Administration says, Firefighting equipment shall be of the type and size. We've gone over the types of fires and extinguishers. Now let's look at the size. It's important to understand the numerical rating system of fire extinguishers so you'll know the capabilities of any given extinguisher. Take these two for example. I have a two and a half pounder and a five pounder. The two and a half pounder has a rating of 10B and the five pounder has a rating of 40B. If you didn't understand